not that social media is bad. That's where your audience is. Yeah. So go find them there. Get those subscribers, get those followers, get them there. But the whole goal should then be to move them onto your platform, then to then have that link that says, here's this thing for free if you give me your email and phone number. Because yeah. that that's to me, that's the purpose of social media. I don't care how many followers I have. What I care is how many people am I able to get off of that platform onto my own. Yo, what's good, people? It's Jay Cactus, and we're back again with episode 28 of Cactus Combos now. In today's episode, I have with me a producer and entrepreneur who's made some serious noise in the producer community over the past few years. He, him and his team have worked with some of the best like Snoop Dogg and Kendrick Lamar. He's made a lot of money for producers selling beats online, and it goes by Gabe from Legion Beats. Gabe, how are you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. No problem, anytime. Um, it's weird that we're on the opposite ends of the camera now. You had me on your show and then we kind of reversed it for this week. But yeah, it's good to have you on. I mean, like I was saying to you the other week, you're someone that I've been following for a long time now. I like what you've done for the community. It's good to see that. It's good to see some passion in marketing because when I look around at producers, I don't really see that in producers. It's just like, you know, people want to make beats, upload them to YouTube, but they forget that if they want to be a full-time producer, they have to have a business mindset as well. So I, I guess, you know, in this podcast, I kind of want to dive in, like straight into the business side, if that's okay. Um, yeah. But before we get into any gems, I just want to say, I'll ask you what, when did you develop the passion for the business side? Because it's not really a common producer thing to have that passion. You know, everyone just likes to make beats, but they kind of forget about the whole business side of it. So what sparked it for you? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, well, first of all, you mentioned, uh, thank you for saying that. And, and I'm a, a big fan of yours. And I've been very impressed with how quickly you've grown um, your community. And you have a you have an awesome community. So, thank you. Um, so congrats. Um, and congrats it. on hitting that 100K on, on, uh, oh, yeah. on YouTube. It's huge. <laughs> thank um, you, man. So man, it's, it's great. It's great to see you killing it. Um, so yeah, as far as for me, like, um, my my background, like I always just wanted to make music, you know, I just wanted to be in the studio, right. uh, making beats, engineering. And, um, I had no interest in, in marketing and entrepreneurship and any of that kind of stuff. I was just, um, you know, waiting essentially for, you know, a manager or a record label or a pub dealer, you know, waiting for somebody to come save me. Right. Yeah. And just, Hey, if I just get good enough at my craft of making music and recording music, cause I do both producing and engineering, then everything will work out. Right. And, uh, of course, you know, the reality is that's, that's not the case. Um, and, and I did okay. Like I was trying to kind of play the industry game. Right. And I did okay. I, you know, I had a couple, couple credits and got some songs on the radio and work with a lot of the, especially here in the Bay area, work with a lot of the bigger artists here and, you know, had some, had some cool highlights, but, um, yeah. uh, did that for, you know, 10 plus years and realized I was still broke. And it was something where it was like time to be like, okay, I, I probably have to, I probably have to, you know, focus on something else as my career. I'll always do music for fun, but right. it's just, it's just not realistic that I can support myself and a family and, you know, be a, be an adult. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so I basically was, was ready to give up on music as, as a career. Um, and then it's almost as like a, a last ditch effort. I was like, Oh, maybe, maybe I'll try selling beats online. Um, and I feel like it, it's, it's changing. Um, but it, it used to be like you're either like an industry producer and then you're cool yeah. or you're like an internet producer and then that's like not cool. <laughs> um, and now, honestly, I feel like it's kind of the the opposite where it's like you can either be an entrepreneur and make money and control your destiny or you can be an employee for a label. You know what I mean? Right. But, uh, but anyway, so so I tried it out just figuring like, OK, maybe I can at least make, you know, two thousand bucks a month and and and, you know be able to actually like cover my rent and food and stuff yeah and that was really my my only goal and what ended up happening was i you know i tried it i tried kind of doing what everybody else was doing you know post beats on youtube link to a beat store that that type of thing yeah um and i got like a couple sales here or there um nothing crazy but enough for to kind of spark a little bit of that interest like oh maybe if i learn a little bit more about traffic or marketing i can get a couple more sales um, and so I started kind of like, you know, I probably just Googled marketing, honestly, and just yeah. like started to like kind of check out, you know, what was going on, um, see what other producers are doing. And uh, pretty much all of them were doing the same thing, except for I came across Anno Domini, um, you know, my buddy, my buddy Adrian, who I course, didn't yeah. know at the time. 
Um, but I was just like scrolling through, I don't know, Instagram or Facebook or something. And I, he had an ad, I clicked on it and it looked completely different, right? He had like, there was a video of him talking and he was telling his story and connecting with his audience. Um, he was giving this whole offer where it wasn't just a beat lease. It was like a beat pack and it had these bonuses and all this cool stuff. And the way the page was laid out, like everything, I was like, this is crazy. Like I've never, I've never seen something like that. Um, and that kind of opened up my eyes to this whole world of direct response marketing and funnels and stuff like that. And um, from there, I just started diving in and learning about it. Um, and every time I kind of learned a little bit more, I would make a little bit more money. My beats would get to more people. Um, and so it started to become really fun. It became like a game like, damn, OK, if I implement this, like I can now all of a sudden I'm selling more beats than ever, making more money. So then I want to learn more. Um, and eventually it turned into being fun, not just because I was making money and getting my music out there, but yeah. like the actual process was fun. Like, oh, I can put this page together this way. I can create this sort of like customer journey where, you know, they start here and then they go to here and then I send them an email here. And, you know, it sounds it sounds corny and it sounds <laughs> like work and it sounds dumb um, until you start getting into it. And so that's like honestly my biggest mission, like if nothing else in however long we have here. Um, if, if I can like convey that to producers that, um, some of those same, uh, skills and some of that same focus that you put into music, if you start putting that into your business and marketing, once you learn some of these core principles, then it can actually be just as fun and fulfilling as the music itself. And so for me now, I feel super lucky because I have two things I love to do, which is, you know, the music and the marketing. And I put yeah. those together and I've been able to, you know, build Legion Beats to a seven figure business and, and now MIDI money to a seven figure business um, and do all the stuff that I ne was never even on my radar. I was never interested in, you know, I never considered myself a, a marketer, an entrepreneur, even a business owner. Um, until I, until I, until I did. And now, and now that's kind of like, you know, the, the thing I'm most excited about these days. Man, it is really inspiring. And I completely relate to that when you say that, you know, you don't really develop the passion for the marketing side until you actually dive into it. I feel like a lot of producers, they, they're scared of the marketing side or they think it's not going to be fun. But I mean, since I've started diving into marketing and setting up the business, there's some days where I'm like, I don't even want to make a beat because I actually enjoy the marketing process. And I feel like a lot of producers, we're, we're kind of nerdy anyway, aren't we? We're like, we're, we're good with software, so we must be pretty good at computers. So it's kind of natural to go into certain things like that. Like even things like setting up an email automation, you kind of just have a natural act for it because you know how to work a computer, whatever it might be. Um, but you just have to dive into it, right? I feel like enough, a lot of producers just don't even try the marketing side or can't be bothered to learn it or I, I don't really know what it is, but what do you think it is with producers? Why do you think they don't want to try the marketing side? Do they think it's just, I don't know, do they think they're not going to enjoy it yeah. or do you think it's something else? I think they're not going to, they think they're not going to enjoy it, right? Because yeah. that was my mindset too. I completely avoid it. I was like, nah, that's that's work. I don't want to do that. I'm yeah. I'm the artist. I mean, not, you know, I'm, I'm the producer, or the, whatever, but like, I'm, I'm going to work on my craft of music. That's all I want to do. I don't like all that other stuff sounds boring. Um, And, and you can prove yourself right, right? right. If you just kind of like try a couple things, like, yeah, like just writing an email is not necessarily fun to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's fun is like crafting this whole concept of like how, how it's going to work. Right. right. Um, and so I think, I think you, you said something that's really smart there, which is like, as producers, we have this skill set, right? Yeah. We're good. Like you said, we're, we're usually good at figuring out software, right? Because we had to figure out how to like, you know, pirate our first, <laughs> you know, uh, plugins or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, um, and, and like producers are weird, right? Like you think about, um, you know, most people, they might like mess around with some, some, uh, some software. They try to make a beat. It sounds like shit. And then they give up. Right. right? Uh, but producers, they try it. It sounds like shit. And then they try it again and then they try it again. And then we keep working on it for years and years and years yeah. until it finally doesn't sound bad. Right. Definitely. Um, so you already kind of have this, this skill set of like running into problems and then being able to keep working at it and overcoming those problems. Yeah. We have the skill set of being creative, right? Coming up with new ideas. Um, and so what happens is 
for me, the big mindset shift was realizing I have that skill set and then actually applying that to my marketing and business. Because right. we'll be like the, the smartest, most creative people when it comes to our music and then it comes to our marketing and we just do the exact same thing that everybody else is doing. It's like, no, like <laughs> be, you know, put some of those resources, the creativity, the energy, the focus, the excitement, like all that stuff that you put into your music, put some of it into the marketing. Um, and then once you have that little mindset shift, all of a sudden it just like opens up this whole this whole other world. Yeah, definitely. I think what you said there with people just copying other people and, you know, just using that same process that every producer uses where it's okay, I'll I'll make a beat, I'll upload to YouTube, maybe put a link in there and then just hope for the best. So many people do it and it has worked for some people. There's a lot of success stories from producers who have grown like huge tight beat channels. Um, But now there's more producers than ever and it's more competitive than ever. So now is like the perfect opportunity to be thinking outside of the box and coming up with new strategies or trying different techniques. So let's say for, for new producers or maybe producers that are at the stage where they think, you know, my, my beats are pretty good now. I want to try and sell them. What are some of the first steps they could take rather than just uploading them to YouTube? Yeah. So, um, so really, you know, the, the idea is to figure out the, the customer journey or the, you know, sometimes we'll call it the funnel, right? right. So, so producers may have heard that term, maybe not. Um, but the idea, what a, all a funnel is, is, is a sales process. Yeah. So even if you are just posting beats to YouTube and then have a link to your beat store, you have a funnel, you just have a bad one. Right. It doesn't work very well. Right. And so when you start getting into this idea of building a funnel, it's just building that process on purpose. So how can you make that, that journey, that experience, um, enjoyable, and uh, um, effective, right? Right. So like, how can you take somebody who has no idea who you are and then have them find out who you are and then know, like, and trust you and then buy from you and continue to buy from you? Like, what does that process look like? Yeah. Um, And so the idea is to to start doing it on purpose. So here's just like one, like very first step uh, that I I like to do is instead of having the, the link, the place that you're sending people to be a link that says, hey, buy this beat or check out my beat store, have it be a link to something for free, right? And so right. that can be some free beat leases, which is super easy because it costs us as producers nothing to fulfill on it, has value um, to our potential customers. And the only people who are going to be interested in those beats are people who are most likely uh, potential customers because yeah. they're going to be interested in buying more beats. Um, so that's the first thing. And now all of a sudden, instead of like, I don't know, 0.001% of people clicking that link that says, Hey, buy this beat here. Uh, now all of a sudden you're going to get, you know, 10, 20, 30%. So like exponentially more people are clicking that link. And now you're, you're thinking about that funnel on purpose and it's like, okay, now I've got way more people taking that first step. Um, so that's kind of like a, a first step right there that, that really makes a big difference um, and it also uses the law of reciprocity, which is like a fancy way of saying when you do something nice for somebody, they kind of want to, you know, yeah. do something nice for you too. And so you, you start off that relationship the right way by giving something, which by the way, you should always do, right? You always want to give value first in any type of relationship. What would you, um, um, sorry to cut you off, but what would you say to the producers no, that are saying, you know, like no free beats, <laughs> you know, you always see like, it's almost like a meme where it's like hashtag no free beats. What would you say to those people yeah. where they think, you know, if I give free beats away, then people are just going to expect stuff for free forever. And then it ruins my brand. And, you know, you've probably heard it all. But what, what's your answer sure. to those people? Yeah, it's it's great for me uh, because it means those people aren't going to make as much money as me and, and the people <laughs> in the in our community who understand, you know, the basics of, yeah. of marketing and, and business. Um, so, so one thing I'll say is, you know, people say, well, if you give away free beats, you can't make any money. Right. Yeah. Um, so just to give some examples, so I've, you know, done well over a million dollars in revenue with Legion Beats. Um, we did a beat pack launch, uh, a few months ago, the beat pack was called icons Two, And we did, I think I should double check the exact numbers, but I think it was $180,000 in two weeks, uh, including a $50,000 day. Um, and yeah. every single one of those people who were on our list, and we can get into the mechanics of, of that if you want, yeah. but uh, they all came in by by getting some free beats first, 100% of those. So right. all of that money, that $50,000 we made in one day from selling a beat pack, from selling beats, every single one of those buyers got free beats first, and that's how we started that relationship. So that right there is proof enough, right? And course, then we've yeah. also got the now thousands of producers in our community 
who follow this and you know we have i don't know if you can see it on here but we give out these these awards uh for people in our community who hit certain benchmarks you know a thousand dollars in sales ten thousand dollars in sales a hundred thousand dollars in sales a million dollars in sales um and we've given out i think like a dozen of the six figure awards a bunch more of the uh you know people who have made uh ten thousand dollars uh and we actually had our first student who hit a million dollars which is super no cool way. that's crazy um and all of those are following this model of you know, starting off with something free. So it's just understanding that basic core concept of marketing. Yeah. Uh, and anybody who says no free beats just doesn't understand, you know, that, that concept that we just talked about. Yeah. I think a lot of people just like to hate before they've even tried something, right? Like they just like to shut people down for no reason. It's like, nah, there's no way you've done that. And it's only because they haven't done that. It's like, if they haven't done it, no one else could have done it. But really like you said they just don't understand like the the core principles of marketing i mean it's the same thing as if you let's say if you were in a supermarket buying food you find like the stalls that are giving out free samples right that's like a funnel in itself you're giving out a free sample of some biscuits or something and then okay you try it you like it you want to go back for more and then you end up buying a pack of those biscuits or cookies or whatever so it's just that exact same model right that exact same principle so yeah i mean um be right same as and you think about pretty much any service you pay for yeah. monthly, right? Maybe you maybe you have Netflix uh, or, you know, any software. Like, they almost always are going to start with a free trial. Right. Like, try it out. Try it for free. Yeah. Uh, and then now, you know, you look back and see you end up spending a bunch of money. Same, same idea. It works across so many industries, billion-dollar industries. So then it's funny to see, you know, producers who have little to no experience in business yeah. trying to act like they understand marketing better than these billion dollars <laughs> of course yeah i mean just giving away like a couple of free beats i mean if an artist is working on an album for example what's one beat gonna do or what's five beats gonna do because an artist is recording sometimes a hundred tracks before they release an album right so they get those five free beats for example then they're gonna need more beats at some point they can't just use those five beats forever and ever so it's not like you're just giving them free beats and that's it they're never going to need anything more because they've got these five free beats and they're, they're set for life so it is a bit crazy to think of yeah and and, and all, exactly right and also um here's the thing if your whole strategy is oh you know okay gabe says give away free beats so then now that's my whole strategy is i just say hey free beats get free beats yeah that's also not going to work right the whole idea is you know you know we we've just started uh to talk about what this funnel looks like we only talked about step one so far right. right and so the whole idea is to have this whole process that that walks them up what's called your value ladder right yeah. so like you know first you give them something free in exchange for their email and or phone number right right then from there now it's the next offer you're going to give them which is a paid offer that could be like a low ticket offer you know and then from there they get that and then you introduce them to the next offer so it's all it's all about um building that process on purpose in a way that is enjoyable for the, for the customer. They're like, Oh cool. I got some free stuff. And I just had to give my email. This is awesome. And then the next thing is like, Oh cool. I get, I don't, you know, I don't know, whatever, 10 beats and, and this, you know, whatever training or something else for, you know, 50 bucks or whatever. Oh, that's cool. Let me do that. And then they buy that and they're like, Oh my God, this is worth so much more than 50 bucks. This right. is awesome. And then you have your next offer. Right. And so they keep wanting to give you more money because every time, they give you money, they feel like they get more in return. So it's having that whole process. If you don't have that whole process, if you're just seeing the tip of the iceberg, you just see an ad that I'm running that says, here's some free beats, and you think that's the whole business model, then then of course that that's not gonna work either. Of course, yeah. So what, what does that back end look like? So let's say, for example, someone has like a landing page or just a link in the YouTube description for people to download a free beat, a rapper puts, or an artist just puts in the name and email address, what should someone have set up on the back end? Obviously, some kind of email sequence, but what does that sequence look like? Yeah, so um, first thing is, yes, name, email. And for me now, on everything, I do phone number because like, right. text messaging has been awesome. So I, I like I like to do both. Yeah. Not that email is dead. Email is great. I do email also. Um, and and just even just to touch on that part, like it's so important to own your list, to own that mm. relationship with your customer, right? When you... Uh, you know, a lot of times I feel like we look at social media the wrong way and we think the goal is to get more followers, subscribers, yeah. likes, comments, etc. cetera. Um, but the reality is none of those things are worth anything, right? Um, you, you, 
you don't own that relationship. You don't own that traffic. If you're on Instagram or Facebook, then Mark Zuckerberg owns that traffic, right? If you're on YouTube or Google, then Larry and Sergey, the dudes who, who run Google, they own that traffic and they can change the rules and they do all the time, right? right? The algorithm changes and all of a sudden you post something and only 1% of the people see it or your account gets shut down. It also happens all the, all the time. Or, you know, it becomes a pay to play network instead of an organic one like Facebook has and, and, and Instagram is more and more, yeah. um, which is all, it's all fine. It's just understanding how to play the game. The only time you actually own that traffic yourself is when you have that email and or phone number. Cause now I'm not platform dependent, right? I can take those emails and I can, it doesn't matter if, if active campaign shuts me down, fine, who cares? I'll go over to, you know, MailChimp or some other email server, you know, I, right. I can, I can use a different texting service. That's when you own that relationship. You own that list. And that's actually the biggest asset in any business is that list and your relationship with that list. Cause you have the opportunity to follow up with that person and talk to them whenever you want. You don't have to, you know, keep paying essentially to, to keep trying to reach that person. Right. And in fact, if you look at the the value of any business, it's almost always the list more than the, the technology itself. Like just to give an example, um, a while back, uh, Mark Zuckerberg wanted to buy Snapchat and he yeah. offered them like, I think it was like a billion or three billion or whatever. It was a lot of money, right? Um, and they actually ended up saying no. And and you think, well, okay, I guess he wants to Snapchat because he liked the technology was cool. You could like post and it would stay for 24 hours. And it's like, no, he's got the best engineers in the world. They right. could rip off Snapchat in like a couple of days. And they did. They ended up doing it, they right? They introduced the stories, Which right? Which shows... Yeah, exactly. They introduce stories. It's it's the exact they just yeah. they just copied it. He could have done that the whole time. What he wanted was the list. That that was the value. Mm. That's why he was willing to pay a billion dollars. He didn't care about the technology. You can copy that in a minute. So yeah. um just to show how important the owning that list is, um, is is that's the first step, right? And then sorry, this is like a lot a long no, I mean, answer. It all makes like, sense because that? I mean, um like for example, Facebook pages used to be huge back in the day. But if you built your whole business model on a Facebook page and then that just kind of becomes unpopular and moves on to Instagram, then that's your whole business model like gone down, right? Same thing like Snapchat. Snapchat's still pretty big, but there was a period of time where it was huge, right? And then when Instagram introduced the stories, Snapchat became Snapchat became like not as popular. So I think what you're basically saying is that if you base your whole business model off a social media platform at any moment that platform could be taken away from you and you have no control over that and that's your whole business gone your whole everything that you've built can just collapse in like overnight right so that just can't happen with data that you own exactly right and and just to be clear not that social media is bad that's where your audience is so go find them there get those subscribers get those followers get them there but the whole goal should then be to move them onto your platform then to then have that link that says here's this thing for free if you give me your email and phone number because that that's to me that's the purpose of social media i don't care how many followers i have what i care is how many people am i able to get off of that platform onto my own right yeah that makes sense So then in terms of like keeping in touch with people, once you do have that data, like how often are you contacting people? What kind of sequences do you have? I'm sure you've got like loads set up, but could you give us a couple examples of some that you might have? Yeah. So usually what I like to do is um, make a, make an offer right away. Right. Um, And I say offer as opposed to just like a sale, because to me, there's a difference between uh, a true offer and let's say a beat lease. Yeah. Right. Um, A a beat lease is uh, something that your audience can get from literally millions of places. Right. Like I I saw BeatStars mention they have two million uh, producers on their platform. Right. Right. Um, So that's at least two million just right there uh, that are all selling essentially the same thing. They're all selling beat leases. Right. And And I get it as a producer, like your beats are your baby. They're unique. Nobody else can make those beats. But the reality is they're there's a lot of producers out there and there's, you know, some of them are still figuring out, but yeah. there's also a lot of dope ones. So what that means is your potential audience has, again, if not millions, at least tens of thousands of like dope producers, they can get that exact same product essentially. From. Right. Um, so the, the solution to that is don't just sell that, uh, we call it like a commodity, right? Something that you sort of get anywhere, uh, create a true offer, which is a bundle of products and services that you've put together. That's unique to you, um, and ideal and irresistible to your specific audience. Yeah. Right. So, 
So part of the way to do that is start thinking about, okay, well, what are the other problems my audience have and what can I solve for them? So, okay, it's a rapper, singer. Cool, I can give them a beat lease. That that solves a problem, but again, everybody else can do that too. Um, well, maybe I'll give them 10 beats. That's 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 something. Okay, cool. Now I'm, now I'm giving them a little bit more. Um, but maybe I also know that they are um, going to, you know, record this at home and it might not sound amazing. So maybe I'll include a, uh, a, a template, like a Pro Tools template for a vocal chain yeah. so that their vocals will sound better. Cool. Um, maybe I'll include a, a mini training about, you know, how to record at home effectively. Uh, maybe they're going to record that song. Now it's going to sound pretty good, but they're worried it's nobody's going to hear it. So, okay, cool. Maybe I have uh, a little training about, you know, how to get more followers on Instagram or how to, you know, get on Spotify playlist or maybe just a list of Spotify playlist curators that they can reach out to. Um, maybe you offer mixing and mastering, right? There's all these different yeah. problems that your customer has where if you can bundle that into an offer, the more problems you solve, the more irresistible that becomes to your to your audience. So to loop that back to that, that email sequence, um, they opt in for the free thing and then you can start talking about this offer that you've put together, right? right. Talk about the value of it and do that partly by telling your story and actually, you know, connecting with this person by telling your background and, and how that brings them value and how you can help them. And then how this offer you put together is, is something that's going to be uh, really helpful to them. Definitely. And what, just touching on the, the offer itself, because some people might think, okay, well, I've only got this one skill set. I just know how to make beats. I can't really offer much else. But sometimes you can like outsource for stuff. So for example, if you have someone that does graphic design, then it might be like, okay, let me speak with this graphic designer. You know, I'll, I'll cut him in. He'll get like this amount from each sale. And then you might find someone else that does, I don't know, it could be any other service like mixing or mastering, you know, anything like that. Then all of a sudden you have this kind of network going, don't you? So, okay, you're just making the beats, but when sales coming in, you have that going to these other people on the team. The, um, and then yeah. that just kind of cancels that out. Then you can't really say that you don't have any other skills because you can actually outsource for it. And although you, you might be giving a bit of that money away from that package that you sell, it's worth it because you're not doing the work, right? And it gives you something to offer. So I'm sure people that are part of the team have been doing like similar things to that. Yeah, dude, that's one of the biggest hacks. That's like that. I'm glad you share that because that's a huge gem right there. Yeah, um, is exactly. You can find other people and and it could be something like, yeah, somebody who does mixing and mastering or they do graphic design and you give them a percentage. Um, and even like another version of that is um, maybe you uh, find another producer who's made a, a, a little course or a little training right. that's helpful for artists. Right. Like Again, maybe it's about social media. Maybe it's about recording, you know, something like that. Yeah. And you can ask that producer, hey, can I include that in my offer? And you could offer, you could say maybe, hey, I'll pay you a licensing fee of this per month or I'll give you a percentage. Or a lot of times what helps is if you find another producer, you just say, hey, let's trade. Like you can include, yeah. you know, a few of my beats in your offer. If I can include your little course you made in my offer, nobody has to exchange money. Both right. of us are benefiting from that. Uh, in fact, in the uh, MIDI Money community, we have this thing called the MIDI Money Offer Library, which is now like over 100 uh, products in there that are like different trainings, courses, beat packs, um, all these different things that everybody in the community has put in there, um, knowing that anybody else can use it for free. Um, the benefit to putting your stuff in there is now your name is getting in front of that other audience, right? So you're course, getting your yeah. stuff out there. And then the benefit on the other side is for me now, if I want to put together an offer, it's so easy. I just like, okay, I'm going to put some of my beats and then I'm just going to look through these hundred things and find like the courses or the things that sort of make sense to include in that offer, you know, and then, and then I'm good to go. So that, that's, that's a big hack right there. Yeah. That's like a perfect opportunity. Like you said, it's free marketing, right? <laughs> so it exactly. just works both ways. Um, yeah. What would you say to the people that, I know we kind of touched on it when we spoke about giving free beats away, but what would you say to the people that say that you shouldn't sell beats for a, a low amount? Like you'll always find people that, let's say for example, you have a package of 10 beats and you're just selling it for $50 and then they're like, well, that's $5 a beat or whatever. And then they're like, no, that ruins your brand. It damages your reputation. What would you say to those people? Because I know that's come up before. Yeah, that's a common one too, right? Yeah. Um. So... I would be careful who you're taking that advice from, right? Yeah. So 
you know, see, see like how, how much, how much money are those people making from selling beats online? Yeah. Um, so like for us, we, we do really, really well, right? We did, uh, like I mentioned, we did this one recently. We were at fifty thousand dollar day, course. about one hundred eighty thousand dollars over the course of the two weeks, um, and that was thirty beats for uh, fifty seven dollars was like the base, yeah. the base price. Um, so yes, you could look at that and think, well, maybe that devalues, you know, my brand or you know is going to be hard to make money. But I'd much rather, um, you know, sell a thousand of something at a lower price than zero of something at a higher price. Of course. Right. Um, and, and the idea, again, is stacking on that value. So uh, it's not just beats now. Right yeah. now we're adding in some of these different things we just talked about. So now all of a sudden it becomes a unique offer and it's not as easy to um, compare those prices. Right. So now you can't really look at it and say, well, it's just. Uh, 30 beats for 57 bucks. I'm getting this this whole package, right? And right. Include again all the, we already kind of just went over that, um, and so that's part of where that value comes from. And now it's not like, oh yeah, okay, I see why it's, uh, you know, um, what, what am I trying to say here? It, you, you can't compare it, right? Yeah. Because it's its own unique offer. And again, ultimately, what it comes down to is, well, what works? I mean, yeah. Again, we're you know. I built a seven figure business. Uh, Anno Domini has also done seven figures on, uh, you know, with his beat selling business. We've got people in the MIDI money community like, you know, Temper Beats, Flip Tunes, um, uh, my best friend Jacob, Wishmaster, Big Shot Beats. Uh, man, who else? There, there's a bunch of these guys that are doing well over six figures, over $100,000 selling beats online through beat packs, not through beat leases. Yeah. So if you can find, you know, any any process where you're just selling beat leases at I don't know fifty bucks a hundred bucks each whatever these guys who are so upset about beat packs are doing <laughs> it that are doing anywhere near those numbers yeah. uh, I'll be very surprised. Yeah, I feel like the people who, who are mad at stuff like that are usually just unhappy with their own position, right? They're usually just pissed off at yeah. people, and it's like why? It's like usually happy people don't throw that kind of hate out there or that kind of negativity anyway. And it's like just be happy yeah. for people. Like if you're making money of selling beats for a cheaper amount, then who cares if you're putting food on the table for your family, if you're paying your bills, if you're living your dream as a producer, you know, making a full-time living off it, then just let them be, you know? It's not really that person's business to be kind of throwing shade on them and say, no, nah, that's bullshit. You can't be selling those cheap beats. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I think you're right. I think that's 99% of it. And then the other, the other 1% are maybe producers who have made money a different way right like playing yeah. the industry game they're an they're an employee for record labels they get placements that's what right. they're good at right they're good at getting placements and that's awesome like i i don't i don't somebody who has a ton of placements if they're teaching people how to get placements i'm not going to be like oh that's that's not how you do it because yeah. i suck at getting placements right but i do think it's funny when occasionally there might be a producer who's like got a bunch of placements but is obviously not as good at selling stuff online and they're the ones who are posting those memes and stuff it's like well yeah like just, you know, teach what you know, right. you know what I mean? Um, and, and that's, and that's few and far between what happens a lot more often is a lot of times these producers who do have plaques and Grammys and stuff like that are, are coming to me and asking like, Hey, can you show me how to do this process? How, you know, how yeah. you're actually building a seven figure business, how you have a team, how you've done all this stuff. Um, because a lot of times those guys are, are not making as much, you know, I've been able uh, to work with some of my favorite producers. I've been able to work with uh, S1, if you're familiar with him. He's done Definitely, a bunch of producing yeah. for, for Kanye and Eminem, everybody. Uh, you know, Illmind. Um, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of, you know, plenty of producers who have, you know, huge placements. Right. Um, and then uh, Cash Money AP, you know, who started on the, you know, sort of on the entrepreneurial side and now is more of the interest side. You know, people that I've gotten to work with now who want to learn this process because they realize, oh shit, like, this is how to actually make uh, consistent money. And now it's like cool to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, whereas I feel like it used to be kind of like, uh, you're a nerd, and, <laughs> you know, you should you should be in the industry instead. Yeah, I feel like for a lot of new producers, especially young producers, they, they think that placements is like the main thing. Like if you're a producer, you have to have placements, otherwise you're not successful. Like you could have, there's, there's just so many ways to make money as a producer these days. But the first question that I get asked a lot is, what placements you got, what artists you work with. And it's not really a main focus for me, I'll be honest. Like I never really reach out to like a lot of artists trying to get these big industry placements. It's just not a part of my business, but I'm still able to make a full-time living off what I love doing. And that's one thing that I'm trying to 
encourage producers to think about, you know, like placements aren't everything. And in some ways like placements, I mean, I can't speak on it because I don't have like tons of placements, but I'd say like for a lot of people who have placements, like you said, they want to come towards like the entrepreneurial side and selling beats online because chasing placements is like, it's kind of out of your control. You have to rely on labels. You have to rely on like artists actually putting out the song to start with. You know, it's a lot of like chasing people down and obviously some people are really successful with it, but it's not the only way you can make money. At least when you do something like we're doing, it's like in your control, you know, you're, you're collecting the state yourself. You're setting up these automations. You're, you're running your own campaigns. You're not really relying on other people. So yeah, I mean, it's just one thing that I've been trying to encourage producers to think about. And it's one of the reasons why we wanted to set up the, the webinar, which now is probably a good time to tell people about. So just for anyone watching right now, uh, myself and Gabe, we're actually going to be hosting a webinar on the 10th of March, right? 10th of yes. March? March 10th. Yeah. And that time was, I believe it was, well, if you're in the UK, it will be 10 p.m. Um, and your time zone is, are you Pacific time? It'll be, yeah, 2 p.m. Pacific time, uh, which would be 5 p.m. Eastern time. Got you. Right. So it's the only time I'm going to be on that live stream um so if you're one of the lucky ones and you're watching this before it goes live then make sure you tap in on the 10th if not then there will still be a link to the webinar you will still be able to get some value from it so make sure you check the link in the description but yeah if you want to see me live in there and if you want to ask a couple of questions then make sure you tune in on the 10th yeah, for sure. And and if you go to uh, midimoney.com slash jcactus, um, go register now. So don't wait until the 10th. Go yeah. register now. Secure your spot. Uh, we'll have even some cool surprises and stuff for you just, just for registering. Um, and you definitely want to come to that live. If for some reason you're you know hearing this after, we'll make sure that that link goes somewhere cool where you will get some kind of free training and, and something cool. Um, but the idea on the 10th is, you know, we've kind of just been able to scratch the surface here with yeah. talking about this whole process of like, okay, offering something free. And then, you know, what does all that look like? What's the mechanics? Then, you know, what's the next thing you do? How do you put that offer together? What do the pages look like? The emails, what's the next thing after that? How do you, you know, how do you get traffic? All those different things. Um, it takes a while to go through. And so uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, so if you go to minimoney.com slash jcactus, you'll see that full training and should mention right now, um, you'll hang out, you'll get a ton of actionable advice stuff that you can you know, apply to your beat selling business right now. Um, yeah. At the end of that, you know, however long I tend to go kind of long hour, two hours, maybe um, then I will, there will be an opportunity to work with me more closely to work with my team more closely. Um, we have a course, we have all these resources, we have a community. Um, so we will be, you know, pitching that as an opportunity, but again, you can ignore that. Just come get the value. Uh, but I do like to be transparent. Um, just, just so you guys know that that will be uh, part of the process. And uh, yeah, midi money slash yeah. J Cactus. Yeah, so make sure you click that. Um, the webinar is something that I've been a part of before. I've actually watched the whole process and there's tons of value in it. It lasts a couple hours, right? So it does. I, it does. I get <laughs> I get excited about this stuff, and so I, yeah. I pack a ton of value. Plus, we do a live Q and A, so any questions people have, uh, we'll both be on there as well as uh, Anno Domini, so you guys can ask you know ask any questions you want. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just a cool thing. And by the way, like we we practice what we preach, right? We talk about yeah. give a ton of value first if you know before you even start to sell something so that's yeah. literally exactly what we're doing right we this is a funnel right you come in to the funnel we're going to get your name email and phone <laughs> number we're going to start communicating with you we're going to start developing a relationship we're going to give you so much value that you're going to want to give us value back and it's going to be a great long-term relationship so if nothing else check it out to see the process uh because again we've been able to build multiple seven-figure businesses with this process uh, both from selling beats and from, you know, teaching, uh, teaching producers as well. Of course. Yeah. And it's one of the most common questions that I get asked. If I go into my DMS now, I could guarantee like seven out of 10 questions in my DMS are from people saying, how do I sell beats? And I can't just voice note you one answer and just say, <laughs> okay, do this and you'll sell beats. You know, you're asking me how yeah. to set up a business, but I feel like the webinar is a, a perfect opportunity to actually dive right into it and get as much value as you can from it. You know, there's a lot of gems in there, so definitely check that out. Um, but yeah, Gabe, just let everyone know where they can find you in the meantime as well. And if you have anything else coming up that you wanted to share with people. Yeah, man. Um, 
hit me on Instagram at Legion Gabe. Uh, other than that, midimoney.com slash jcactus is really the best spot to go because yeah. hop on there live. We got that free training. Uh, so I'm just excited to to connect live with your audience. I appreciate the opportunity here to, to be able to speak to them, but uh, it's going to be fun to actually hang out live and kind of share my screen and show the behind the scenes of, of how we're able to do this and how they can implement this in their own business, whether if it's selling beats or selling packs um, or honestly selling anything. The, the process is actually pretty similar. Definitely. Well, man, I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. So, yeah, once again, thank you for coming on the podcast. And, and yeah, we'll keep in touch. And I guess we'll see each other on the 10th. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.